Thanks, guys. Honestly, just as Emma said, it's really crazy because obviously we all, we all have our stories and our stories are so powerful to each and every one of us. But when you actually just look and think, that, that's like my whole year just before my eyes, it's, it's really heartwarming. It's crazy. So I don't want to go too much in depth into my story, but the only thing that I do want to say is this I'm holding here, my iPhone, is I built a blue diamond in six months just on my iPhone. I couldn't afford thank you. I I couldn't afford a laptop. The laptop we did have was broken. And we didn't have an iPad and I was that crazy mum. You know the crazy mums you see that like working 9 to 5 and literally like running with their child into nursery because they don't want to be late and I was the crazy mum. We really struggled. We was in a lot of debt and I was just that crazy. Oh, I look back and I think, "Oh my god, I was just such a crazy mums that you see and I didn't have much time okay so between working and my son I needed something that I could utilize and my nine to five was all about customer engagement and how how we shop as customers and I knew that my phone was going to change my life along with the whitening toothpaste that you saw so that was kind of my story in real brief so what I want to talk to you about, so what Emma went through with attraction marketing is so on point, it is so key. That is exactly how we've built our business, that so we want people to come to us. We want to create curiosity. We want them to say, what are you doing? What is that? Can we have more information? That is what we aim to do. But there's one thing that I'm really passionate about, and that actually is customer. So... Customers are the heart of everything that we do. If we, you know, we're a people business. If we didn't have customers, then we wouldn't all be sitting here right now. So let's just move on a little bit. So I want to talk about how we present products uh, through social media, whatever platform it may be. So I'm going to talk mainly about Facebook as I've built my whole business through Facebook. So the first thing I want to talk about is personalization and branding. So I'm just going to quickly get these three up before I actually talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so how I'm going to set the scene here is, for example, I am a customer and I want to buy our marine mud mask. Every single person in this audience can offer me that mud mask. So why am I going to pick you? And this is all about how do we add value, how do we stand out in such a busy marketplace, and what is your identity, what's your strong identity. So I'm going to go through just a few things with you that me and my team do that really help us with our customer base and building really good engagement. So personalization and branding. This is one of um, a beautiful lady in my team, and she, her branding is called I Am Shop. So she wants to stand out. Everything we do, we sell complete new skin products. We don't sell anything else, we don't market anything else. We just brand ourselves slightly different. So she uses I Am Shop, and we're quite creative with it, to be fair. As you can see, she creates little loyalty cards, and when customers come to her, she puts little lollipops in there, because we... We want returning customers. We want them to continue coming back to us and they have that perfect service. So I, online, never talk about new skin. I always talk about Hazel's Beauty Box all the time. And I do believe it is what has built our business so quickly is because straight away we're standing out and adding value before anyone else has even got there first. We are set in that scene. So next up is, so I said about customer. So let me just grab these up again as well. So like I said, my background um, is actually within customer engagement, customer service, mystery shopping, what trends are in the marketplace in the UK, um, etc. So the bottom one, what I want to talk about first is, so biz B2B is business to business, B2C is business to consumer, and we need to forget about that, okay? Let's actually get with what we're doing. We're a people business. It's about human to human. That's what it's about. Forget all this business lingo. It's human to human. Customer service is not a department. It is an attitude. Every single one of us in here has to have customer at the forefront of our mind all the time. We always say, you're going to hear it from everyone else that's speaking later, people buy from people. They don't buy from big companies. Everything... 
everything starts with the customer. And I've had so many customers that have come through that have turned into becoming distributors, executives within my organization. And there is nothing more powerful than having someone join your team who is already in love with the products. There is such a powerful thing to have. So I'm just going to give you an example. You can't see very much, but this lovely lady, she has an exceptional customer group. So you can see she has around 5,000 members in her customer group. So for those that aren't, that aren't very familiar with what groups are, so on Facebook, you can have three different types of groups. You can have a public group, which anyone can see. You can have a closed group, which is purely, you can find it, but you can't see what's in there. And you can have a secret group that even if you type that in, it wouldn't come up. It's completely secret. You cannot find it. So what we do with our customer groups is when we're more public on our normal profiles, we're more wary with what we're putting because we want to create curiosity, we want to use our traction marketing. When it comes to customers, we want to build more engagement with them, so we want to talk more about the products. We want to share like demos of what we're doing, and we want to have lots of fun with it as well. So Reagan... I I can't even read what she's put. I just laugh all the time because this was Halloween and she just put a pumpkin, a video of a pumpkin and a mud mask on it. But she had, like, she had so much engagement from that because you can really show your personality there. And like we say, people buy from you and your personality and that's exactly what this lady has created through her customer group. And the great things about customer groups is that you can, you can be fun with it, you can be engaging with it, you can run little competitions. For example, you know, anyone that adds 100 people in, let me know. And you know, they do like little prizes and things like that. So you can really grow a good network that's still within your base through your customer groups. So let me just click it again. Here we go. So I use my business page. As I mentioned, I, I am Hazel's Beauty Box, OK? I don't talk about selling new skin. I talk about Hazel's Beauty Box. So I have around, I don't think it says on there, around 6,000 likes on my business page. But please don't be fooled. It is so, so time consuming. And it's quite difficult to build a really good base on a business page. You have to be so consistent with it. And with consistency, you need to be very engaging. And the only way I found to do that is to create videos through my business page because people like them, then people start sharing, and then the outreach is getting more and more. So all I can say is when you're building online, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, whatever your platform is, you just need to be consistent with it. Trust that process. It takes three weeks to develop a new habit. So if you get into the habit of you're doing X amount of posts every single day, things will start happening. You just need to find your channel and your niche for things to work, but just don't be disheartened within you know, a week if there's no customers coming through or you haven't got very many likes or your, your customer group isn't that big yet. It takes time to build, okay? So... Track your audience. What works for you and your audience? So this is really key. So we do touch on this a little bit, but I'm a mum and I've worked in the corporate world. So for me, I'm going to track my audience and my target market is exactly that. But also on a bigger scale as well. So the UK has only just come out of a recession. Okay, so it's been quite hard. So I know that we're... The, the economy has struggled with money. There isn't that much money in there, but people still want nice things. So what, what we do within our team, we take the smaller products and we sell a lot of them products. The whitening toothpaste, the marine mud mask, the collagen lip gloss, the new mascara that's come out, the polishing peel. They love it where we are. So we really understand our audience completely. And that's what you need to just tie into. Just understand and track what they're doing. And I think from a, a bigger perspective as well, you think about Amazon. Amazon completely dis are destroying the UK retailers that are on the high street. Everyone is going online. So really utilize the trends, okay? We're not actually creating the trend. The trends are naturally happening. So jump onto what these trends are. Emma said it. More people are going to say it. Be real. Be you. And if you are busy, so you have a nine to five, you have children, life is pretty hectic, there's plenty of platforms out there where you can just have a little bit of help. So I put um, Hootsuite on there, and say in the morning or in the evening, you can schedule your post. You can do five, six posts, say, you know, 10 o'clock at night, I'm going to schedule my post in to go between eight o'clock, 
lunchtime, five o'clock, and a couple in the evenings. And then you go to work, and they're just going to schedule. And you can do it for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It will just go out for you, and it's totally free as well. So you should definitely have a look, if you're limited to time, how you can work better with that. OK, let's get a little bit more interactive. So does anyone actually currently really utilize Facebook at the moment or social media? OK, so you guys will probably have seen quite a lot of this. There are really, really good posts on there, and there's some really ugly posts. So I just want to go through, and we're going to judge whether that's good, bad, or ugly. OK, so we need to set the scene with how we're interacting with our customers. So let's do the first one. Is this good, bad, or ugly? I think it's ugly. I think it's even worse than bad. I really do. I mean, if I saw that, I wouldn't even stop to look at it because it's not telling me anything. It's not very engaging. There is no benefits on there. The fact that it's got, like, well, it actually means 30% off, I think completely um, it doesn't do much for our brand whatsoever. This is a really ugly post, okay? People put in this a lot. So just for education, this isn't going to get you sales. This is not going to get you sales whatsoever. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so good, bad, ugly. I actually think this is medium. So this is actually, I think this creates a lot of curiosity. It makes you think, oh, what is this? I'm intrigued. I might ask a few questions, but you're not straight away thinking, I need that. So next one is, so good, bad, ugly. And I love this. Okay, we can't actually see what she put, but she never once mentions she's selling it, how much it is. All she's put is her with the tea green capsules, and she's put actually the benefits on this post. And she created so many sales just from this post because she's being real, she's being her, she has the actual product in her hand. She's not just copying and pasting it from someone. So next one. Good, bad, or ugly? What do you think? Oh, my goodness. Put in prices, and I just need to read it out again, £17.50 for a mud mask, which is under value for the UK, £6.50 for a toothpaste, which I think is like pretty much wholesale. One, that's not going to get you very good sales. It's not going to build trust with your customers either. It more looks like, oh, I just need to shift loads of stock. That's not building a brand. That's not building a business. And that's not building trust. And if you think of it more from your team as well, that is doing nothing as one big team together whatsoever. This is really ugly. <laughs> that's been great. OK. So this one, good, bad, ugly. Doesn't really do much. What, just a picture, screenshot. So this is the, um, is it the foundation? Yeah, tinted moisturiser. This is a tinted moisturiser, okay? So someone put this as a sales post, okay? Next one is also tinted moisturiser. Which one are you going to be more inclined to ask for more information? Because, again, you can see it's her. She's got the actual product in her hand. She hasn't put a salesy post. All she's explained is that it's really good value for money, and she's put the benefits as what it's done for her. She got 20 orders for this tinted moisturiser just through this post. Okay, This is the power what happens. And just touching on benefits of products and how to market them is always talk about the benefit. Don't just copy and paste something. And I always say this. Say, for example, I wanted to buy a camera and I had a salesman that said to me, yeah, it's 20 megapixels. That would go straight over my head. But if someone told me the benefit that it's 20 megapixels, which means you're going to get a really clear and crisp photo to remember, you know, to have your family memories there forever. I'm sold. That is the benefit of why I need that. Always talk about the benefits. That's going to be key for our business. Always talk about the benefit. So I think that's the end of that. Okay, so training, online, leadership. First of all, I just want to say welcome to the business of leadership and self-development. I love this industry and exactly what it stands for. So I very quickly caught on that I could coach, help, support, however you want to call it, my team, through having support groups on Facebook. And this is exactly what we built. You know I said about public groups, closed groups, secret groups? I have a secret group for my team. Um, a lot of us do. Emma does. A few of the other leaders in the UK have exactly the same thing. And what we do is we share information in there. So we, we do videos. So we the things you see are the type of things that will be in there, like how, how we should sell properly through Facebook, how we should sponsor people through Facebook, how, how we need to 
educate our teams. And you can upload files in there. So I've created a lot of training materials. Uh, for example, we, I've got goal sheets in there. I've got um, get to a Zek in 30 days sheet that I made. We have so much in there. I've created like a, a daily habits checklist type thing. And I'll go through one, one thing that I do in a, a couple of slides. So we just have everything in there. And that's so powerful because you can communicate so quickly. You don't have to wait for a weekly conference call. You don't have to wait for your monthly meeting. You can communicate straight away to your team what they need to know. And it's, it's down to them to take accountability whether they're going to go through that group and look. If they're serious about the business, they'll be looking through that. Okay? And you can tag your team. So anything that I put, I tag my key leaders in it and I say filter down to your teams, okay? So we're always thinking about how we make the process easier, how we can make duplication easier, and how we can make communication easier as well. So I've just touched on it, but always stay connected. And welcome people as well. There's no point. This is um, the two you see here is actually in Emma's group. So they have a part where welcome people, make them feel like they're in a community, like they're actually in a team, like you know, we're building all over the world. Welcome them so other people can say hello. We can start connecting in different areas so we know where they are. We put example posts of what works well for us so we share exactly what we do and we get immediate results from it. So, next one. Communicate with your actions. So, I'll go a little bit slower. So, I, I give this to people that are very new to network marketing. So everyone in here needs to double everything that, I've, that I'm going to show you through this. Okay, We can do way more. This is so basic. So I say to everyone that we have to talk to at least 10 new people a day. And I'm not talking business here. I'm saying you have to like just talk to 10 new people. So say it's through Facebook, 10 new messages. And you find something on that person's profile... Like, I love them shoes. Where do you get that dress from? Anything that you can associate with and start a conversation, just be nice. Be genuine. Be real. Don't do it thinking, don't have the head on, recruit, recruit. Have the head on that you're building relationships because they're going to keep the key people. And then when they do come into the business, that's what they've learned and that's how that's going to duplicate down as well. I see so many people recruit people and they have people as a number and I just do not like it okay people aren't numbers and I learned this quite quickly that amateurs recruit people you have your posers that just get people and you have your professionals that help people and it took me a while to kind of get this into my head but has anyone ever felt and please be honest I'm being honest that when you're looking to prospect people, present to people, you felt like you're bothering them at all. Has anyone felt like that? And this is, that, this is the whole mindset between if you're focused on recruiting someone, then that probably is bothering, the, bothering them because it's about you and not them. But if you're going to be a professional and you're going to aim to help someone, how can you ever bother someone if you're helping them? Do you see what I mean? You can't. Always have the mindset that you're going to go and help someone. And, you know, this is basic. This is whether, you know, you're face-to-face -face or online. Always have that mindset that you're here to help someone. We have a gift here, okay? And actually, News can have a pretty awesome gift because there's no, one, there's no other company in this industry that are like us whatsoever. There really isn't. And we need to be so, so proud of that. And people aren't going to know that unless we shout about it and we're proud about it. And I did this in the morning session, so I hope you guys are a little bit louder. Who is a proud network marketer? <laughs> that was way better than their third one, but we'll do it again. Who's a proud network marketer? Yeah! Exactly. Always be proud and be even more proud that we're a new skin network marketer. Okay, went off, to off topic, sorry. So... At least, I say 10, 20 new conversations every day that you're going to build. Track it. Write it down. Who are you talking to? You can tell this to your team. Okay, so I say three. Let's say six. Post each day about product. So you know that the tinted moisturizer one that I showed you, the 20 sales? They're the type of the post that you want to be doing. Opportunity. The ones that Emma showed you about attraction marketing, that's what we mean when we say opportunity, okay? 
and they're motivational. Find something that really inspires you, whether you're following some like real key leaders in the business or like some really good keynote speakers, you're following their Facebook pages and you're sharing their videos. Just share something that inspires you because if it inspires you, even if it inspires one other person, it's better than inspiring no one else. And that is going to attract people to you as well because people want to be with positive people. So the same with your business page. If you're building at least six posts a day, and I always have people say to me, I don't want to be spammy. I don't want to crum, you know, come across as that whatsoever. And the first thing I say is Facebook is very, very clever. And it only allows you to reach 7% of your friends list anyway. So it's really hard to spam someone. The business page is even harder to do so. So you really need to be on the ball with this. Think about your timings. If people are going to work, you want one before work, 8 a.m. People on the lunch breaks between 12 and 2 people around in the evening, okay? So if you're putting posts out that are 11 a.m. or 3 p.m., you're probably not going to get as much engagement as the ones where you know people are actually going to be looking through social media. I'm out of time, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Let's just go on anyway. Team chats on Facebook, okay? This is really positive, especially if I found this really helpful when I first started to build engagement and to get the team really close. Have a Facebook team chat because if you're not there and people are asking questions, other people are learning the business and they can help you. So just leverage everything that you've got. Get everyone working as a team, okay? And then we have... Yeah... Okay, this one I find really, really important to do as it really sets you up for the morning and it's going to set your team up for the morning. It's really positive and really powerful. Every single morning when you wake up, don't do your emails yet, don't do any messages yet, don't start your work properly yet. I want you to message three people within your downline and that can be just a, a hello message, a well done message, even if it's just like, hi, I'm Hazel, I'm in your support network, just wanted to introduce myself. Okay, just do that every single day. And if you're doing three every single day, that is going to build up and up and up. And guess what? It's going to duplicate down. So everyone is going to feel a part of something that they have someone to talk to. And the last, no, this isn't the last one, 50 minutes self-development every single day. People aren't honest enough. People say, yeah, I do my self-development. No, you don't. You know you're not consistent with it. Don't lie about it. We know. Because I've been there and I'm like, yeah, I do it. And I haven't. And now I make sure every single day that I do it. My self-development isn't what you see here. My self-development is I need time on my own to reflect. And that is my self-development. And then look at your goals every single day. Your definite purpose statements. Every evening, three things that you're grateful for. They don't have to be big things. We need to learn to have gratitude in this business because if we haven't got it, we are going to struggle. Three things every day, even if you had a bad day, you write three things that you're grateful for. Even if it's that you had cheese with your dinner, I don't care. Something you're grateful for, write it down. And what I want to finish on is... We are always students first in this business. We always need to be learning. We cannot get out of that learning phase. We always have to stay in it. And I say to people, you know that phase, fake it till you make it or faith it till you make it? I don't believe in that. I believe in believe it till you make it because being a student first means that we're a mentor second. And I've had people say to me that, well, what happens when I do make it? Do I stop believing? I'm like, no. What was the first thing I said? We're a student first, so we're never going to stop learning whatsoever. So we're always going to have, we're always going to believe in ourselves. And I've had struggles. Emma's told you her struggle. Starting the business, executive really quick, provisional executive three, about to leave the business. There is no shame to fall. The shame is not getting back up. So remember, we are proud network marketers, and we're so damn proud to be a part of New Skin. Thank you. Woo!